Welcome back dear viewers to another Exploding Hamster Total War Warmer 3 speculation video. I will talk to you about how we know that the Ogre Kingdoms are now definitely confirmed. Now that might not be a surprise anymore. I will talk to you about the update of the legendary Hamster Hype Train Total Warmer 3 release schedule and a little bit about the factions we may expect for, for Warmer 3 because last time I did not really include a total list there and I got some comments that asked me to include them. Now let us begin and thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like and a subscription because if you do I may grow this channel quite a bit and even work more on my tutorials. So let us begin with how we know that the Ogre Kingdoms are confirmed and as usual I'm very happy to receive your comments on why you think this may not be true. Although I think for this part, well, arguing that the Ogre Kingdoms will not be a faction for Total Warmer 3 by now is a shaky ground at best. There has been, as you pretty much know, a new Total Warmer 3 blog post from the 2nd of July and they talked a little bit about the Ogre Mercenaries that were confirmed and you've probably seen a lot of the other Total Warmer 3 YouTubers who got preliminary access or you're showing up uh, showing off all that stuff uh, but uh, when you scrolled down the blog post you found something that said more to come and if you know the total warhammer lore you know that the great maw is something like a meteor turned into a god it's like that star wars um like hole in the bottom that can eat you and the ogres they pray to that thing and sacrifice food <laughs> and stuff so the great maw is uh, well points towards the ogre kingdoms and it's, it's basically the, the their god but not only that if you read further you can you can uh, particularly read this past uh, this part here this taster which is of course the ogre mercenaries are a mere morsel of white what might lie in their kingdom. So, yeah, I mean, really, I mean, and even even in, in this whole section here, they write, um, what better possible ways there to bid farewell to the new world and warmer two than with brutal warriors adventuring far from their home in the northeastern reaches far beyond the realms of the empire and Kislev near the mysterious lands of Cathay. This taste is a mere morsel of what might lie in their kingdom. And I mean, guys, come on. This is this is basically a confirmation that <laughs> the Ogre Kingdoms will come and they will come soon. I think that much is very, very clear from this blog post. And as usual, I mean, this is all fun speculation. I mean, of course, we would gain nothing if this is wrong or uh, it would lose anything if this is not, uh, not right. So. Um, we can discuss this, it's, it's just great fun. <clears throat> so yeah, I think Ogre Kingdoms are definitely confirmed for Warmer 3 and they will either be the pre-LC faction or they are still, as what I've thought earlier, be a still unannounced additional faction that comes for Total War Warmer 3. And we will see what this is and which of these is going to be, to be the truth very very soon. Uh, additionally, interesting part here they wrote uh, in the lower part of that blog post. Yes, the Ogre Mercenaries are our final major addition to Warhammer 2, alongside the other content in Silence and the Fury. Now, what this means, in my opinion, is uh, what this could mean is that the Ogre Mercenary update, well, since this will be the last thing that comes to Warhammer 2, it means that the pre LC race for Warmer 3 may not actually be available for owners of Total War Warmer 2 as has been the case for the Norska pre-DLC race um, for Total War Warmer 2. I mean that, if you remember, <laughs> that caused a lot of, <laughs> lot of issues back then and game kind of kind of didn't work out and then the Norska were not included in Total Warmer 2 for a while. It was quite messed up. So in my opinion this means the pre-LC race, whatever it's going to be, 
will not we will not be able to play it in Warhammer 2 which is in my opinion kind of sad but it may have other meanings as well it means that if this is true if this is true it means that the Chaos Dwarfs, which I uh, was my primary speculation for the Total Warhammer 3 pre-LC race, um, will, will not be inside Total Warhammer 2, which would be really sad. I mean, I might may be wrong, maybe I'm interpreting too much into these small sentences, but yeah, so here's to the future. Now, let's have a look how does this influence the total warhammer 2 3 update dlc pre lc plan so this was the june version which i showed last time um which basically um, shows all these star signs from the warmer world i mean this this schedule even ended up on the great on the channel of great book of grudges so i know i'm kind of making some kind of impact out there so thanks for that guys <laughs> and uh, back then i thought well and uh, we'll have Slash versus Chaos Dwarfs, then Cinch versus Katai. Then we'll be able to play with the Chaos Dwarfs in Total Warmer 2. And then at the end in October, we'll see Nurgle versus uh, the um, Ogre Kingdoms. And then there will be the Total Warmer release in November or December. Now, in my opinion, it may look a little bit different, I think, since we're already. Um, I might have to change this a little bit. We are now already um, in the beginning of July and we've still not really seen anything. Uh, we still couldn't play the Lord Pack. So everything is pushed to the end of the year. I think by now we are. We can be pretty sure that Total Warmer will not be released before the December. So they will get the sweet, sweet Christmas um, sales off makes a lot of sense and everything will be pushed a little bit to the end of the year so um but uh, by now i mean and we've already got some hint in the another blog post of creative assembly that the next uh, trailers will be um will be delightful and mysterious if you remember so basically that's confirmed that it's going to be slanish and cinch next even in that order uh, they said it in their blog post and i'm just wondering are they going to do it like this like having slanish fight cinch to be honest i mean that would be kind of boring and throwing a lot of potential away just having two demon armies fight against each other at least for me it would be kind of a bummer to to have that going on there so i'm still hoping it will be chaos dwarves and it's still going to be um yeah, it's still going to be hidden. I mean, they are keeping very tight, <laughs> the Creative Assembly team. I mean, you've heard nothing about the Ogre Kingdoms just maybe a few days before they were actually released. But since they told us now that, I mean, it still may be, it may, may still be true, like guys. But the, I think the, the possibility increased that Chaos Dwarves could be out. And instead, we'll see something like this. But on the other hand, what does Nurgle have to fight? In my opinion, it still doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, we, we could see it maybe like this, keeping the Chaos Dwarves a little bit further out. Um, yeah, it, it could, could, could still be like this here for, for the hamster hy hypothesis. Of course, there's no guarantee that we will get the Chaos Dwarves. I mean, many people wrote in uh, on the last video that you think, well, Creative Assembly will probably make Something more like these is a DLC faction for Warmer 3, and I totally understand it. They could make a lot of money, I would buy it. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I hope it will not be like this. I still think, I still think this is not unlikely. Maybe this, or maybe, maybe this way around. But I think the original Hamster Hype hypothesis, I'll still stand by it until I'm proven wrong. Now, let's see what happens what do you think am i delusional am i dreaming things i am looking forward to uh, see your comments so and, um creative assembly the great deceiver as i've called them in my last video they've said well we'll have more factions than in other any other total war game before during the start and you've rightly criticized me hey hamster if you've got keys left Ogre Kingdom Chaos Undivided, well, you've got still all these other factions here. I mean, yeah, 
Nurgle, Siege, Corn, Slanish, you've got seven main factions instead of four main factions. And even if you would remove the Yoga Kingdoms from this equation, you would still be at six, which is still more than any other and the other games before. And maybe if you've got the Chaos Dwarves and you count them, you you're back at eight. I mean, um, basically, you, you can count it in many different ways, in many different fashions, and you get more factions than any game before, so that's not a big hint anyway. And I totally agree um, that Belakor, the Dark Prince, a ruler of um, probably the, the legendary lord for Chaos Undivided, will probably see him. I'm pretty sure I've also seen the hints in the trailers where they played something about Belakor backwards in one of the trails, which is kind of nice. Um, it's still Chaos Undivided. I think it will still come with the main Chaos factions. I mean, what, what's what's there what's there to add after you've got Korn, Slanis, Tienge and Nurgle? Um, you've, you've basically got everything um, you have to make Chaos Undivided. What, what, what's there going to be in the... If you want to sell Chaos Undivided, there's a, another DLC faction. Well, what's that going to look like? I mean, this is all, everything is already in there. I mean, <laughs> of course, even for the other DLC factions, everyone can, or even if you don't have the DLCs, you can play against these factions, you just can play it yourself. Okay, of course, if you don't have any mods, then, then you can still do it without paying. So, lots of options there. Now, um, how is the world map going to look? As you've probably also uh, already seen, uh, the, we will be able to um, advance into demonic territory, if you may call that, so the, the realms of the Chaos Gods. We've seen that with Kislev and Korn, so the Kislevites are able to move somehow into that bloody hell of Corn and defeat or, or conquer some of these icons of corn destroyed, and that's probably going to be some kind of end mission. And there will be something similar, like with the uh, the um, labyrinth of mirrors for Tsinge, the Garden of Nurgle, and I don't know <laughs> whatever the Pleasure Garden of Slanish looks like. So you'll be able to attack all of them. And somehow even the chaos factions can attack them themselves. Apparently, even you can you can attack the the corn <laughs> corn itself with corn. I mean that's very fitting. I guess uh, that's what corn does after all. Still, I think this 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 standoff here with four chaos factions um, opposing four mortal factions still makes a lot of sense to me. And even if they don't add the Chaos Dwarves or the Yoga Kingdoms with the Total Warmer 3 main game, I think this is how it's going to be at some point. I know they already did something similar with the Tomb Kings, where they had a lot of content missing here in the Great Deserts uh, south of the Old World. But, yeah, I don't know. I think there's more to come. I mean, the Creative Assembly is pumping that hype train like never before. I've never seen them pump up so much content. So I really hope, I really think the Chaos Dwarves are still waiting to be released. And what else there are going to be regarding DLC? And these uh, are the factions I think are most likely to come with further DLCs for Total War Warhammer 3. The Hobgoblin Incarnate is something I think is maybe maybe a minor chance of that. Another green skin faction would definitely be nice. I'm very sure that Warhammer Nippon will be an update. I mean, they basically are doing this already with, um, well, they basically have that with, content with Shogun and the new um, uh, Total War Three Kingdoms, uh, which will include like a more fantasy style Romans of the Three Kingdoms story with dragons and, and stuff. So I, I think it's, it's basically, I think we will definitely have Nippon. Makes a lot of sense. I think, uh, yeah, I, so Hobgoblins, Nippon, I think that's quite likely. Maybe Kingdoms of Ind, but they don't seem to be a fan favorite. More likely the Harpings, they would be great as a fun faction, like in Blood Bowl, Blood Bowl 2, Blood Bowl 3 is coming out in half a year, something quite hyped for that. And Estadia or the Border Princes, that's also a very nice number of factions they could add. And there's already been a lot of lots of modders uh, that went around and created really amazing mods regarding the Border Princes. I definitely recommend them. Great stuff. Arabi also, yeah, could also come. As well as Amazons and maybe the Dogs of War, since they are already some Ogre mercenaries here now. May be able to include them, but on the other hand, I mean... 
dogs of war. I mean, it's like that I can, you can kind of mix them with the border princes, something like similar. Let's see. I think yeah, Nippon hobgoblins, border princes, halflings. That's my. That will be my favorite factions to see in Total War Warmer Three DLC. Yeah. So I, I talked about a lot of stuff. Talked a bit longer than you in the last video, I think. And this is my hamster hype hypothesis. I still expect the Chaos Dwarves to come. What do you think? Give me... Oh no, that's the June version. Give me your best. Tell me I'm wrong. Or tell me where you think I may be right. Why not? I, I mean, I posted this on Reddit. <laughs> they totally downvoted me like crap. Ah, uh, It was like... It was like I've got negative karma now on Reddit. It's so sad. But I guess, what what can you do? Oh, also, another kind of interesting in information regarding Chaos Dwarves. I'd like to add that in the end. Uh, as you know, there's Thoric Iron Bro that's being added as a free LC Lord, Legendary Lord, as basically the legendary version of the Rune Smith General of the Dwarves. And he is a Dwarven Lord in the World's Edge Mountains. Well, it's not, not that surprising. I mean, most of the Dwarves of the Old World are on the World Edge Mountains. And, um, well, might be another hint that, well, he's fighting towards the east. He's fighting against Chaos and he's fighting against some kind of like the Chaos Dwarves there in the east. So, I have not, I'm, I'm not losing hope yet. Not losing hope. So, that's it from my side. If you want more tutorials and stuff like that, I can also do some Total Warmer videos. I've got like thousands, thousands of Total Warmer campaign and multiplayer videos. We've got our own leagues um, in the German community there. We're not as good, of course, as the great uh, international players, but we make, we make do. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.